And then now going into KubeDB, uh, the things that we have uh, looking to do. So one of the things that uh, uh, you know should go, be out uh, fairly soon uh, in the, uh, is the schema manager project. So in the schema manager, what this is doing is today when you deploy a Kubernetes YAML, let's say a Postgres server or a MySQL server, it will create a Postgres you know cluster or a you know, MySQL cluster. And then, uh, you know, we create a root user, but then we leave it as is. Uh, we don't do anything more there. Maybe you can potentially initialize it, but that's about it. But with this project, what it will become possible is that you can run a single MySQL server or a Postgres server or Mongo server, but create separate databases, right? Effectively doing a create database command and then uh, create database and then create a user who which, uh, which user will be uh, sort of restricted or scoped to that particular database. So in a way, let's say you are, have a you know team of developers. You know instead of making everybody create their own database instances, which you could do, but you know it, it can add up if you have a lot of developers. Uh, you know as you keep adding in terms of CPU and memory, so you'll be able to effectively use a database as a kind of a shared resource, right? So you have one database and KubeDB will automatically kind of create a database for you based on a CRD. Uh, it will create a database user that will be scoped to that database instance, uh, uh, that database uh, schema. And then also you will be able to create an initial uh, sort of data in there, right? So you can kind of uh, create a schema, like you create tables and all that, or you will be also able to kind of restore from an existing database, uh, you know, that, that has that, you know, where you took the backup using stash. So effectively, let's say you have a production database, you just want to be able to create into a local copy into this shared instance, you'll be able to do it. So that's uh, that's what we are calling a schema manager. So today, this is kind of the, uh, you know, uh, the initial sort of goal for this project, uh, but uh, we are happy to uh, get your feedback and you know, keep improving on this. So the another feature that we kind of quite frequently get requests for is read replicas. Uh, so you know, if you are using databases for your BI application, so you're running uh, you know, uh, like a report generation type long running queries, expensive queries, you may not want to run them on your production database. Uh, so we are looking to uh, add support for uh, sort of read on replicas. So this will be separate from the main uh, database and they are sort of the standby replicas. Uh, so we're starting with MySQL as a first, uh, you know, sort of the one database that we support. But as long as the, uh, you know, the databases which themselves support this pattern, it will be supported. So you can create like a read replica and, and then use that uh, to uh, do your uh, backups. Sorry, not the backups for your uh, you know, sort of report generation or BI business intelligence type of applications. Uh, so this will be done uh, in case of MySQL, we are looking to use async application. So what that effectively means is that uh, there will be no impact on the primary instance in terms of write performance because you know the MySQL is not going to wait for application for the Z replicas to complete before it sort of goes to the next, next transactions, right? So it will be completely async. Uh, you know, as usual, you know, uh, based on your feedback, things will improve. Uh, but this is where we're starting today. Um, the upgrade process, I mean, I already talked about uh, that we are looking to sort of improve the installer upgrade process. I think uh, that is part of this, but in case of uh, KubeDB, there is an additional component where, you know, we, we uh, sort of deprecate a certain, uh, let's say version of a database. For example, there's a Elasticsearch uh, advisory right now because of that log forge, log 4 j uh, CVE. And once things like this happen, uh, we'll push a new release and we'll deprecate the old versions. But then the databases that they're running uses old, old versions. You know, right now you kind of have to manually go through them and decide to upgrade. Uh, you know, sort of run an upgrade ops request or potentially have to restart them. So things like that, uh, we are looking to automate all of that. 
frankly, the web console is kind of a necessary part of this process because there we need to we need a way to be able to kind of communicate to the sort of the ops team or the dev team who is in charge of these databases that uh, you know the system thinks that there is a kind of some sudden operation needs to happen. Uh, you can kind of you know run it immediately or kind of tell it the system to run at a certain time period, like you know kind of when there is like a off time for the database instances. So this sort of thing. Uh, uh, so sort of effectively, you know, not just the operator upgrade, but even after operator upgrade, certain things needs to happen usually for databases. So this process will, you know, uh, this uh, will kind of automate that. And this will also sort of, you know, tie in their feature around like a TLS management. So right now, you know, we do have a automated TLS upgrade process uh, using Sort Manager, but the trigger is still sort of a manual, right? Like you know, it will it will tell you uh, it will if you trigger the ops request, it will do the all the necessary operations in correct uh, in a in correct order, but the operation is still sort of triggered manually. So it's kind of like think of, like you know, what do we today have auto scaling support uh, for like a CPU memory or storage? Essentially, it's kind of going to an auto DBA mode. It's not just uh, the you know the CPU memory scaling, but you know, TLS management. If needs an automatic upgrade operation or recommended operation, those those all aspects of that, uh, it will start recommending those to the, uh, the, the the database users, effectively the database admins who are in charge of these databases, and then they can go ahead and approve it, or you can set up like you know just happen automatically. It will happen automatically. Uh, so. So now the other thing that we're looking to do is web dashboards. So this is a little bit different from our web UI. So when you're talking about our web UI, we are kind of just talking about like, you know, doing the database deployment, provisioning, Grafana, all of that uh, from the UI, but, but then each database also have their own dashboards, right? Like for example, if you are using Elasticsearch, there is Kibana. So today we have some instructions sort of written, uh, you know, uh, in the documentation, like how to do these things, but we are looking to, uh, uh, you know, bring those under the operator support. So uh, when you deploy Elasticsearch database, it will be able to just deploy a Kibana instance. And uh, it, it will automatically connect that Elasticsearch instance. So you can kind of log into the Kibana and, you know, do whatever thing you need to do through those uh, dashboards. So this sort of thing, uh, we are looking to starting with Elasticsearch and Kibana as that's the one, you know, most frequently requested. Uh, but we are looking to do it for other databases. Uh, I believe there's quite a few uh, sort of uh, key ones like Postgres is an important one. And we are looking to do some, there are some generic tools that can kind of work with multiple databases. So we're looking to do those things. I think there are like interesting questions around how the authentication for those systems will work. Uh, but uh, but it is, it is you know, we will start with at least if you have a, like a root access to the secret, you should be able to use it in a kind of a web-based UI. So this will, uh, you know, and, um, and yeah, and it will have all, all the necessary authentication, making sure everything works correctly. Uh, so this is a thing that we have been uh, kind of a discussing uh, for some time and looking to, uh, you know, work on this year. So this is a cross cluster deployment, right? So today, uh, you know, what with KubeDB we support is a single zone or multi-zone cluster. So you have like a Kubernetes cluster, maybe different nodes are in different zones and, you know, you can kind of deploy all through a single uh, operator. But uh, there are interesting cases where uh, you know people are running a different Kubernetes clusters in different regions. Maybe one is running in, you know, maybe in Virginia in U.S. East region. Maybe another one is running in U.S. West, uh, maybe L.A. or something or Las Vegas. And then maybe there is another data center running in Europe. And those are all separate Kubernetes clusters because Kubernetes recommends that your API servers stay separate. Now, how are you going to, how can you run a database that can kind of, you know, run across those three clusters? So let's say you are running a three node cluster, you know, each node or each pod of the database is actually running on different uh, clusters. So this is kind of, a, uh, I would say, a more of a research uh, end of project. I think that today the primary challenge is that um, 
Kubernetes itself uh, doesn't have a good way to establish a cross data center, uh, uh, cross Kubernetes cluster communication, especially if you are using managed Kubernetes clusters. Uh, like let's say you are using GKE. Now, if you have a GKE cluster in multiple different physical location regions, that can work. But if you want to uh, establish a network uh, across GKE and EKS and Azure, that's quite hard because you know the cloud providers doesn't really work with each other. So, so there are certain uh, primitives that has been developed in the Kubernetes community. It's called an MCS, a multi-cluster uh, networking. So we're looking to uh, make this possible. I think the initial focus will be the case where uh, all the clusters are under the same provider, right? Like all by Google or all by AKS. So that's uh, networking is possible. I think the networking part is one big challenge. The other big challenge is, okay, now you have three pods, but they are running on three different clusters. Like how does it work? How does failover work? Can I make failovers happen when I need it? So there are quite a few interesting challenges and like where does the shared information leave, right? Like. You know, when you create these databases, uh, where do you uh, create those YAMLs, right? Like, because you can, if you create in one cluster, it's not going to work across other one. So there are uh, interesting uh, challenges, but but this is something uh, we do see uh, requests from our uh, existing user base. So we're looking to kind of start working on it. So that's one piece. Um, the another thing that we are looking to work on is also in a similar fashion, somewhat uh, uh, research oriented is that today, uh, you know, KubeDB kind of works as an operator. So the general expectation or the idea is that users are going to bring their own cluster. And then uh, we deploy uh, KubeDB uh, operator using a Helm chart and all of these things. Uh, well, this is uh, obviously going to continue to be a supported mode, but we are also looking to do a uh, kind of a completely turnkey DBS solution where you, know, you can just give us access to a AWS account or GKE account and uh, KubeDB will automatically manage the clustering process. So it, we are not necessarily looking to like uh, develop our own sort of uh, clustering system, but it's going to work with, uh, use the cluster API. And like, you know, let's say if you are on Google Cloud, it'll use, it'll take over a GKE cluster or potentially create a GKE cluster and run all databases in there. Right. So this is a kind of the scenario where uh, the, the cluster is only used for database management, right? You're not looking to uh, running it as a shared cluster where your some applications are running uh, in some namespaces, databases are running other namespaces. It will be only just databases. So it will be like a sort of a, you know, purely database centric cluster. Uh, so this is uh, something, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, as usual, uh, you know, looking to do for cloud and on-prem, especially this will be important on on-prem when you are like you know, running on bare metal, like how you manage the whole infrastructure. So, so in a way, you know, if you are an end user of uh, KubeDB, uh, you don't necessarily have to know that it is running on Kubernetes unless you want to, I mean, it is okay if you want to, but, uh, but it will be that. So this is uh, going to be using cluster API uh, as a sort of the underlying infrastructure uh, sort of uh, API. Uh, so this is this is something uh, you know we're looking to make progress this year. I think another thing that uh, you have seen us kind of work uh, is uh, you know start to provide our own sort of uh, Grafana dashboards. But I think that's kind of just a starting point. But uh, a, we are looking to kind of you know give like a full monitoring solution for all these databases. Obviously you can, you know, develop those today yourself using, you know, all the exported uh, metrics and all of that. But, you know, but uh, the point is the reason you are coming to KubeDB, uh, I hope is that, you know, as a user, you don't have to think about all these things, right? So this is all done properly using sort of the standard uh, open technologies, but all, uh, you know, pre-developed and managed and maintained. So, so this will also kind of part of the web UI that we've been working on, right? Like making sure everything is set up and you can set monitoring and all that. So it'll, uh, it'll be based on Grafana Prometheus and, uh, and you know, integrating into our dashboard. So that's uh, the general focus of this project. Uh, new database support. Uh, 
So we haven't really added any any new database database support in the last two years. We kind of just uh, you know initially we took a like a breadth first approach, added a bunch of databases, but then last two years, I mean last two years, meaning like 2020 and 2021, we have been focused on uh, you know just improving uh, sort of the completing all the sort of the day two aspects of this um, databases. So this year we hope to add new databases. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, which databases? This is still sort of under consideration. Uh, we have a, quite a few, uh, you know, that we uh, commonly see, and it could be database. It could be like you know, we do have some support for like proxy SQL or things like that, which you know, kind of has been in an alpha stage. So we're looking to uh, you know bring them to kind of a, a production quality support. You know, not just a deployment, but like all aspects of the day to lifecycle management monitoring you know, all of that uh, in this under the umbrella and, uh, you know, have a UI support and all of that. Uh, so in the same vein, we're going to be also uh, exploring kind of a, you know, improvements in the YAML format. Uh, so it'll always start with the new databases once when they are added. Uh, this, uh, you know, this UI, uh, sorry, the YAML format change will be backward compatible. I mean, at this point, we have enough production users that that's kind of an uh, you know absolute necessity. But it will be done using you know sort of a CRD conversion mechanism. So once we have a you know uh, explored all these options, especially if you look at the storage uh, layer, in the last uh, few years, Kubernetes has really like uh, you know revised their whole storage layer, going from a kind of a built-in storage drivers to the CSI base and has like all kinds of ephemeral supports and all that. And we want to take advantage of all of that. Uh, and then like all kinds of flexibility that we see our users keep asking for. So, so it will really focus on those uh, flexibility in terms of this new API version. We're still looking to call it Alpha 3, but uh, you know, just because it will be kind of a bit of a uh, redesign in certain aspects, but it will be, uh, but, but you know, sort of the goal is to get to a better release, hopefully after this, uh, as you know, as all, all of the primary APIs of the, uh, you know, underlying Kubernetes APIs are kind of becoming stable. Uh, regardless whether we call it alpha, it doesn't necessarily mean alpha in the sense that, uh, you know, the operator itself is production quality. It's just that the YAML uh, format, we're still, uh, you know, exploring options here or, or improvements. Uh, now that's kind of what we have, uh, you know, uh, for QBB, I mean, as usual, things will probably change as the year progresses and, you know, hopefully we get your feedback. Uh, but uh, but this is kind of what we have in mind for now.